understanding a thoracic lordosis. When we look at spinal alignment, we have to understand that the spine is actually not designed to be straight from the side. It's actually designed to be curved. And the reason why the spine is curved from the side in the first place is that it makes the spine stronger. It makes it more flexible, and it makes it better to absorb and distribute mechanical stress that's occurred during movement and a result of gravity constantly pushing down on your spine. Now, the types of spinal curvatures that you're designed to have are mainly in the three main sections of the spine, in the cervical spine, and in the thoracic spine, and in the lumbar spine. Each section has its own curvature associated with it. In the cervical spine, we're supposed to have something called lordosis, and then in the thoracic spine, you're supposed to have a kyphosis. Now, what's the difference between like a lordosis and a kyphosis? Well, a lordosis is when the spinal curvature bends to the front or bends to the front of her body, meaning if your, sky, if your spine is in the back of you, it bends to the center of your body, where a kyphosis actually bends towards the back. It bends away from the center of the body. And there's a big difference between a healthy curvature or what can be considered a hypo, less than normal, or a hyper, greater than normal, or actually something that's completely inverted, meaning it's bending the wrong way. So what is considered a lordosis and what's considered a healthy range? Like, like I mentioned, the cervical spine is supposed to have a lordosis, but so is the lumbar spine. Both these areas bend forward, and they give you what you have is the normal arc looking in the, low, in the neck and a normal arch that you have in the low back. This forward bending in the cervical spine can be 20 to 40 degrees. The ideal range is 40, but there's a little bit of variance for each and every patient depending upon their genetic makeup and their, their frame and their structure. The lumbar spine normal range is between 40 and 60 degrees. It could be a little bit less or a little bit more depending on that person. Now a person has a lordosis if they fall within this range, normal healthy range. However, somebody can have excess if the numbers are greater and that would be called a hyper lordosis or somebody can have a decreased lordosis and that's if they fall beyond, below these numbers and they have a hypo lordosis. Now, what is a thoracic lordosis? Now, a thoracic lordosis is something that's very different. It's because in your thoracic spine, you should have a kyphosis. You should have a spine bending towards the back. But when, if your spine starts to bend towards the front or bends in the forward direction in the thoracic spine, that's called a thoracic lordosis. It's not called a thoracic hyperlordosis because you're not supposed to have a lordosis in that area at all. It's supposed to be kyphotic. Now, when this area when this starts, starts to bend forward, it can lead to many different types of things. And the many, many different types of causes of this can be something that's, it can be affect postural, it can be congenital, it can be post-surgical. Unfortunately, we see thoracic lordosis involved in a lot of times of, of scoliosis surgery, especially when they use Harrington rod surgeries, and it could be also a neuromuscular case. What are some symptoms associated with thoracic lordosis? All symptoms are case specific, but postulately what you're gonna see is the abdomen and chest more pronounced and the butt pushed more back into like a swayed back appearance. It can lead to back pain, it can lead to nerve issues and mobility issues. Now, very often thoracic lordosis is also the commonly associated with scoliosis. Now, this is what I find very interesting. When we look at what thoracic lordosis is and we look at what scoliosis is, so you can imagine that this, uh, the, the spine is supposed to be bent towards the back in the thoracic spine. The most common scoliosis is a, is a thoracic scoliosis. So you can imagine that the spine is supposed to bend back. Well, if it rotates and it becomes flat from the side, you can see now we have a curve from the front. So that's why we understand that scoliosis is kind of like this curvature, or this normal kyphosis, rotating to one side and now it's becoming very flat. Normally the flatter somebody's spine is when they have scoliosis, the more likely their scoliosis is to progress during the growth and the harder the curve is to treat. So we're trying to always trying to restore normal thoracic kyphosis not only in patients with scoliosis, but for anybody because it can lead to further back pain, mobility issues, and other types of sagittal alignment issues. When the spine is, has a lordosis in the thoracic spine, this also predisposes people for two other conditions. 
cervical kyphosis, where now their spine begins bends in the wrong way, the wrong way in the cervical spine, which can lead to all types of cervical concerns, and also predisposes people for spondylolisthesis in the lumbar spine. And this is when L5 or L4, one of the bones of the spine and the lumbar spine move forward. And the reason why it would move forward is because you can imagine if this whole, my whole body was pushed forward because my I don't have the normal kyphosis, it creates a shearing effect or an abnormal load in the lumbar lumbar area, which can lead to spondylolisthesis and back pain. So when you see, just because you have a, a flat mid-back or a spine bending in the wrong direction in the front, we say, okay, it's no big deal. It's just the way I stand. It can lead to much more complicated issues like progressive scoliosis, kyphosis in the neck, which can affect the cervical spine and spinal cord and nerves, spondylolisthesis in the low back. And the reason why? Because it affects the biomechanics and especially affects it the way when you're growing and developing. So. You know, understand what you should do about thoracic lordosis. You should be proactively th seeking what, how to reshape the spine back into alignment and understand that, first of all, what's causing it. And then two, once you understand the causation of it, if it's trying to do a treatment program that's gonna actually produce a better outcome by reshaping your spine back into the right alignment. At Scoliosis Reduction Center, we combine multiple treatment disciplines to provide a customized treatment approach for each and every patient, regardless of their spinal condition, whether it be thoracic lordosis, thoracic kyphosis, cervical kyphosis, or even scoliosis. Our goal is to restore normal alignment as close as we can and then maintain that through proper home therapy, home rehab, and exercises. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.